Hey guys, welcome back. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create gamma exposure profiles. Now, what tends to happen is when market participants purchase options, the dealers have to take the other side. And in order to take the other side, they have to keep hedging via options or the underline. Now, by aggregating all the open interest for all the options chains for the SPY on September 19th, we can kind of estimate how much the dealers would have to hedge for a 1% move on the SPY. Now, anywhere on this shaded green side, dealers will be more inclined on purchasing the stock to hedge their positions, thus creating more demand on the upside. This would kind of push it higher. And here on the chart, you can see the first number indicates the underlying price and the number right next to it following the bar indicates the estimated hedging amount for the dealers according to the gamma. So if the ETF crosses 450, the estimated hedging amount would be somewhere around 3.7 trillion and you can see this is at the highest point and the approximate estimate that would go into the market for the dealers to hedge their positions according to the open interest and the data on tuesday september 19th now on the flip side if the stock goes all the way to 440 the dealers would be more inclined to sell and at this point they would have to keep selling to hedge their positions at an estimated 3 trillion and at this point since we have market participants selling along with the dealers it would create a further push down on the stock so in short, whenever the stock is within this red shaded region, dealers are selling. And when it's in this green shaded region, dealers will be more likely to be buying. Now within the script, you will also be able to calculate the estimated flip price, which is the price where it goes from green to red or red to green. So here we see that the estimated flip price was around 444. And if we take a look at the market activity on Wednesday, September 20th, which is the day after, we can go ahead and plot that data along with the stock. So by using all the options data on the 19th, calculating the flip price, the minimum and maximum, we see that on the 20th, it kind of hovered around the flip price up until the Fed release. Now, the theory was that if it crosses that minimum point or if it stays below this flip price, dealers would be more inclined to sell. And as you see, that is what happened. Now, of course, the market keeps changing. So these values and the open interest would have to be updated, but the general theory tends to hold. So let's take a look at the code to recreate the report. All right, so here are some of the packages you're going to require. You are going to need some sort of options database. As long as you have the end of day data, you should be okay. You could also split this by expiration, but in this particular report, we're taking a look at all the options chains for a particular day. So we start off by grabbing the options data on the 19th, and we're also gonna request data for the one year treasury just to get the rates, and we're gonna convert these to daily rates as we are going to need these rates to calculate the option price. Now, the next part is the actual calculation. And for the data requirements, as long as you have the option flag, the open interest, the strike, the implied volatility, and the expiration date, you should be okay. And I also left the link so that you can read up more on how this works. We're gonna start off by subsetting our data to that particular trading day. We're gonna split the calls and the puts. We're gonna grab the underlying price at the end of the day. We're gonna round that price to the nearest 10 points. We're gonna subtract 50 and add 50 to create a sequence. And what we're gonna do is calculate the option pricing for every single strike for both the calls and the puts for the entire range of the stock, which will give us the theoretical pricing of the option throughout our entire range. We're gonna extract the gamma, the open interest, and the underlying close. After we make our calculation for all the strikes that are available on the call side, we're gonna row bind our results, and we're gonna create a data frame by grouping by the underlying close, and we're gonna calculate the gamma exposure by multiplying the gamma times 100 times the open interest times the underlying close, and the underlying close times 1% for that estimated 1% move, and then the direction. The direction is just a one if it's a call, a negative one, one if it's a put. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the puts. We're going to calculate the Greeks for all of our strikes that are available in our data set. And again, we're going to row bind and make our calculation. And then we're just going to combine both the calls and the puts. So the put gamma and call gamma should return two columns where we have the underlying close and then the gamma exposure. And after we combine them, they should look something like this, where we have the underlying close, which is our range, the gamma exposure for the calls and the puts, and then the sum of the two. So the process doesn't take that long. It took 15 seconds for the calls, 13 seconds for the puts, and I used all the strikes that were available. Now, the first thing we do is calculate where the signs flip. That is when they go from negative to positive. That will be our location. We're gonna extract those levels in order to calculate the estimated flip price. So here we're trying to find the point of intersection and adding that level to our data frame. So if we take a look at all gamma here, we're gonna go ahead and add the estimated underlying close. 
which turned out to be very close to 444, and you see that the totals were zero. So after you add that, we're gonna merge our estimates with our data, and then we're gonna use high chart to create the actual plot. Now, if you wanna plot it against the actual stock, you are gonna need some intraday data, and all we're doing is extracting the min and the max for the gamma exposure and plotting it against the stock. So you can virtually do this with any stock or ETF, so long as you have data. And I found this to be a very interesting topic. Well, this concludes the video, guys. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.